All right, today is the sixth. All day long, we need some new notes. We are doing twelve six on two six. I'll find that one. So. So. The crate is right there, the big yellow crate down on the floor. Tell them some of those have fresh batteries in them now. So, in case you're like me and don't care, Patriots won and affects none of us. Yeah, but directly today, in the sake of what we're doing, it doesn't affect us. So, so, what, let's review, since we had the weekend, um, oh, and I do have, once we get through this lesson, make sure I pass out your papers, I have your circles test to give back to you, because now everyone has taken those, um, people are asking, when are we going to take this test, you know I don't like Monday Masteries, so obviously not today, I also committed to you guys that we would play a review game, so my guess is we will probably actually go ahead and start chapter 13 tomorrow, and do a couple days of that, and then do a review game, and then do your test either on Thursday or Friday this week. So how does that sound? For a couple good. days. Um, I did not make live your 12-5-6 homework over the weekend. Hopefully none of you guys care, because hey, it's your weekend. Um, so I'll make that live tonight, just try to get that done before we take the mastery, and uh, then we'll move into chapter 13. I forget what 13 is. I think we get into sampling. Maybe it's a little bit more. Oh, it's surface area volume. Yeah. Uh, we keep doing geometry, and it's pretty fun. So if all of this has made sense to you, it should continue to make lots of good sense. Who can summarize what we talked about last week? With slicing, we put those in quotation, slicing our three-dimensional shapes. Like how do you get bigger pieces that are like another thing pieces? Okay. So how to compare the, the slices that we make, like when is one bigger versus um, when are they all the same? So, like, what sort of shapes were we slicing where they would, like, give us the same sort of slices? Do you remember the two different types of 3D shapes we're talking about right now? Um, it was, like, this is a pyramid. Okay, so pyramid is one type. The rectangle? Well, rectangle is a, a flat shape, a 2D shape. Ozzy? A rectangle. Ooh, so prism. So, ignore that first word, because if we're just going to classify our two different types of shapes that we're talking about right now, we have prisms, same all the way up, whatever it starts with, whether it's rectangular or square or triangular, doesn't matter. A prism is the same all the way up, and a pyramid starts at the shape and goes to a single point that we call our vertex. Um, when we were slicing, what are the two main ways that we talk about our slices? That we can, and main, not the only two, but the two main. Moms? So we do, but we haven't really talked about those much yet. We, we've only dealt formally with prisms and pyramids so far. We'll get to cones. Um, so horizontally and vertically. Which of those doesn't need specific details? Or, or yeah, I guess you could say, which of those would you need to give more details to? Huh? Wait, you need more than Ah, so horizontal, whether I cut through left, right, or through front, back, horizontal is horizontal. It's the same plane. But vertically, if I slice through front, back, compared to if I slice through left, right, that's a different plane. So vertically, we got to give more specific details to, and we can even go beyond just horizontally and vertically and go with diagonal slices. And what do we see about when we slice diagonally? What about that plane compared to a horizontal or compared to a vertical, Sean? It'll be longer because once you turn diagonal, you have to cover a longer distance to get to the bottom or the other side of our shape. Are there any questions with us synthesizing those ideas from last week? Any big issues from the homework or anything like that? <laughs> cool. So we now, yeah, go ahead. Question, I think this is cool, but 
basically gave us a score and said, what does this represent? And the correct answer was represent the We can go back and look at that, but like, so you're, you don't have a question on that question, right? You're just kind of bringing it up. Okay, let's, we'll get through this pretty quickly today. So let's get through this lesson, then we'll go look at that. So if you were to write a description for somebody else to draw a geometric figure, take a second and write what details you think would be necessary. Then we're going to hand it off to a partner and see if they draw the right figure. So all you can do is write the details of what shape you're imagining. So it can be two-dimensional, it can be three-dimensional. Write all the details that you think are necessary to get somebody to draw the shape that you're thinking of. Any shape? Uh, a geometric figure. So it could be 2D, could be 3D. Be and then I'm going to pause this and pull up Schoology. So Monica was talking about this problem. The big thing here that you'll understand more as we do more with this is these little arc markings were left over from your compass. So as we start to draw more of these things, excuse me, we'll use your compass more and more. So that and these tick marks, what do these tick marks tell me? Center. Not the center. They're representing something, geometric communication. It is communicating something about those sides, these ticks. They're equal lengths. So it doesn't actually matter where those tick marks get put. Yeah, they're in the middle of the sides right now, but that's not what it's showing me. What it's showing me is they have equal lengths. That's how we know that it's a square. So that's why that is what it is. What's an angle bisector? Um, so an angle bisector, I can pop back over to our notes and still show you that. So an angle bisector would be when you have an angle, how do you cut it in half? So say you're given an angle like this, how do you find the midline that cuts that perfectly in half? And we have not learned about that stuff yet. That is more um, kind of eighth grade standards. We're, we're going to get to some more of that. Gravity works. Who what? I mean, this class combines seventh grade and eighth grade standards. How much of eighth grade math will be finished this year? As much as we can. How much do you think based on math? As much as we can. So, trade off. Whatever you have written so far, trade off. Trade it to a partner. Now, partners, you can draw on their page, but do not draw super large. Respect the size of their page. You may draw on their page, but do not draw super large. See if they draw the same thing that you thought. Guys, I'm only giving you 30 more seconds. See if you can draw what they described. All right, did we find any problems? Go ahead and trade back. Trade back. Don't fill out somebody else's notes. Did we find any problems in our descriptions? What issues did you guys maybe have? Monica? I didn't get it. Basically, it said cut a rectangular shape. Yeah, that's what So, you didn't have details on size of rectangular prism, and cutting it in half, you didn't exactly necessarily know what he was trying to communicate. So maybe he didn't get time to give as many details, but some lack of details, right? Any other issues that we found? Did anybody get perf? Ooh, Dom. Oh, okay. The one that I think was like, depending on what you say, relative when you say bottom. Yeah. Relative, so I, I love that you brought that up. When you are thinking about something, that doesn't mean that somebody else is going to interpret it the same way. You ever been on the phone with somebody or texting somebody 
and you're trying to communicate something and you get really, really frustrated because they're just not getting what you're trying to explain, you can't assume anything. Especially in geometry, you cannot assume anything. So it all comes down to, did we give enough details to make sure that what I'm trying to communicate gets communicated effectively? So let's look at these instructions that this jeweler left for his apprentice, or his assistant, sorry. So sketch two possible frames, then choose one and describe any extra information the jeweler would need to provide, guarantee that the assistant makes the exact same. So let's look. Cut a frame with five sides, okay? So we're gonna have a pentagonal shape, five sides. The top of the frame where the chain passes through should have a 108 degree angle. The two sides that make up the 108 degree angle should each be half an inch long. So sketch some possible outcomes for this shape based off the jeweler's instructions. Sketch some possible outcomes based off the details that they've given us. We've got five sides, a 108 degree angle, and that angle has sides that are half inches. Sketch some possible outcomes here. Now you can either approximate the 108 degree angle or measure it with a protractor, but if you're good at approximating so far, we know it's going to be a little bit over a 90. So if I was trying to do this, What are you doing, Junior? Getting what? You can take the whole bin if you want. That might be easier. And then just bring it back. So we know 108 degrees, half inch, half inch. Why? Why are you saying that, Don? What? Yeah, what about these sides? I don't know if this is going to look like that, or if it might look like that, or, I mean, it could look like that, I guess. I mean, we don't know anything else about the other three sides. So is this a good description? No. No. What else could we add into the explanation to make it a better description? And the trick here is recognizing what do I need to say and what do I not have to say? So, Mana, so what do you think we would need to say? Um, the rest of the three sides. Yeah, three. Three sides should be the same. So, if we said my other three sides, so, um, or we could say all sides. So instead of this, we could change that to all sides, half inch long. Now, if I tell them the top angle and all of the sides, do I need to tell my assistant the other angles that would be created here or there or like those places? Do we need to talk about those angles? No. Who's saying no? Andrew, why are you saying no? So as long I, I agree with what you're saying, but as long as we know all the sides. Yeah, so actually, since we know all the sides, I only need one angle. So I agree with what you said, except once we know that top angle, and I know that all of my sides have to be identical, this shape is either going to work and we can make it, or it can't work based on the details given to us. But when we know all sides, and at least one angle, we know everything. I don't need to give more angle information. Now, what if instead, alternate reality... What if instead I gave angle info? Is there a way to give more angle info that we wouldn't have to 
give more side info. Mm. If I give all the angles, but the angles have to be less than so we yeah we've got some negotiation that can happen. But if we gave the angles, then the sides would be determined by however the angles match up. So remember when we were making our triangles and we would draw the line extra far and then erase the extra? That's what we would do here. So I would maybe draw my lines you know, extra far out, and then wherever I have to, I would erase the extra when I find that out. But when I get told the angles, sometimes we can't actually give everything because then the shape won't work. So we're not going to take a ton of time on this, but if you had told them more angles and more side lengths, you actually might get to a point where the shape can't be made because it physically can't be composed with those certain lengths and those certain angles. Now this one that we have over here, we could actually draw a perfect where each of these is 108 degrees, sorry, not 100, 108, and each of these is a half length. We could actually get to that point. So based on this being jewelry, especially with Valentine's Day coming up, gentlemen, I hope you've been thinking. Especially with this being jewelry, we would probably end up trying to make a pentagon that looks nice and pretty and uniform and all the sides would be the same. So, check out this got it. Let's imagine that you're now working in the jewelry store. Your boss leaves you the directions. Sketch a pendant of a blue quadrilateral triangle on top of a green square. Or sorry, blue equilateral triangle, thank you. Hmm. This statement right here. Highlight that or underline that. Notate that somehow. Oh. On your paper, write what you would say to clarify these directions. How would you tweak or change or re-describe this situation so that you know whether you're trying to get sketch A or sketch B. Right now, we don't know which one's right. It says that the jeweler was actually expecting sketch B. So if the jeweler wanted sketch B, the jeweler was expecting sketch B. How do we change this to make that right or correct? How, what descriptions would we actually want to say? What other information? Julian? Could, yeah, couldn't A still be over? Couldn't A still be over top of Evie? Um, yeah, we could say in front of, but what if the triangle was out here? Then it's in front of, like a coefficient is in front of a variable. Um, yeah, Helena? Ooh, if instead of on top of, we said inside of, yeah, Ozzy? Ooh, we could say, like, on the, that sounds kind of awkward. I mean, you're like, that's fine, it just sounds a little weird. Mm -hmm. Noah? In the middle. In the middle, yeah, this, this isn't quite technically in the middle, though, since the, it's higher up than it is, like, low. I could also say something about, um, crap, I don't want to give it away, my mom's. Uh, they don't, so overlapping, I could actually draw like that, and it would overlap, but not be completely. So overlap would still leave a little bit of ambiguity. Jeremiah? So how many... Vertices touch here. Two. How many vertices touch here? So if the jeweler wanted to make sure that he got sketch B, he could say the three vertices of the triangle should each rest on 
an what do we edge. call it? on an edge of my square. So you could say something like inside of, you could say something talking about the vertices, you could say something um, where it's inscribed, where you put something in, so scribe means to write in, so you could inscribe it, you could say the triangle's inscribed in the square. Yeah, Jermaine? But if you said vertices touching each side, you could just like spin the triangle. You could the rotate side, it a little bit. And then so, the vertices would be touching different spots. So if we talked about vertices, we would also need to talk about parallel. So if we were going to do that, we could say something, the bottom of the triangle is parallel to the bottom of the square. Yeah. Very good point. So let's move on and keep thinking about these situations. So a carpenter has a wood box. Now let's like say we've got like a crate or something that something was shipped in and you're doing a discovery day plan something that you want to take this big wood box and make it a smaller wood box. Now what's nice is with wood, if I cut the end off, I can reuse that wood. So he wants the smaller box to measure 12 by 8 by 4. How many square inches of wood does the carpenter need to close the new side of the box? So we can reuse some of the wood that we cut off. But what we're asking, so I need you to do two things. I need you to first sketch on here where the carpenter is going to make the cut. Is it a vertical cut? Is it a horizontal cut? Is it through the front back? Is it through the left right? How is that cut going to look? Remember, solid lines for what we can see, dotted lines for what we can't. And then we need to calculate the square inches that we need to close it. So we start with 16, 8, and 4. We want 12, 8, and 4. We start with 16, 8, 4. We want 12, 8, 4. So, Ashley, if we look at the dimensions we want compared to the dimensions we have, what dimensions am I going to keep? Yeah, the, the height and the width, the 4 and the 8, need to be preserved. So, Ellie, if I'm preserving the 4 and the 8, what's that mean? How am I going to cut this? You're going to put it front, um, front to back. So I'm going to cut like this. Oh, wait, go horizontal. Ah, hold on. So I'm going to cut like this. Yes. I'm going to cut oh, wait, through the that, 4. That way. That, that way. Other way. There is no other horizontal way. Okay, hold on. I know what I'm trying to say. So. Make it easier. What dimension? What dimension are we going to cut through? The 16. We are going to cut through the 16, which means I have to go through that side. So always think first, what dimensions do we keep? What dimensions get sliced through? So I'm going to have a line coming across the top, and I would dot this line down the side, dot this line across the bottom. So now that opening, Sean, what are the measurements of that opening that we now cut? Ooh, so this is four and this is eight. And both of those are inches. How do we calculate area, Sean? Uh, length times width. Length times width. So the area that I'm going to need to cut for a new board is going to be 32 inches. 32 inches squared. You gotta have that square to make it area. Uh, no, you would not use this and squared. You would write out I N squared. We only use this when we're doing shorthand notation for lengths. And the, the single one is for feet, but you still can't use that squared. Like you would put F T squared. So actually what he could do if he was really smart, take the back of the box, cut that off, cut the section that he doesn't want off, and then use the back, slid forward, reattach it, now you got your smaller box. Using the same box to begin with. 
Now the carpenter decides, so let's say he's got a few of these boxes sitting in his basement. Now he decides, or sitting in his shop, I guess. My shop is just in the basement. He wants 16 by 6 by 4. Change colors, if you're able to. Or if you want to use pencil and draw it on the same box, you can. I would change colors if I was you. We want to now show, to get 16 by 6 by 4, how do we do that? So again, think what dimensions need kept, what dimension is going to get cut through. So Dominic, which dimension now am I going to cut through? Which one am I not keeping? I'm going to cut through the 8, which means I'm going to cut vertically. And through the front, because the 8 is my front. So when we draw this out, I'm going to try to be kind of in scale. Uh, this red line of mine kind of is not parallel, so it looks a little weird. Sorry, so my plane is not perfectly square with it. You guys see how this looks kind of off? Uh, yeah. yeah, so sorry about that. It looks like the back is a little bit further to the left than the front is. But if this new dimension is 6, then what are the dimensions of the red plane that I cut? The red plane that I cut. Sam, what do you think? What's the height of this red plane? And how long is it? Ah, so that's now 4 by 16. So this area will be 4 by 16, which is 64 inches squared. So if the carpenter was trying to decide which cut should he make to make a smaller box, say he's trying to make a gift or something, this uses less wood than this one would. Because to fill... The cut he made with this one, it takes more wood. Now, it depends on if he's recycling the wood or if he's using new wood. So that would be where the difference comes in. Any questions on these? You guys would be amazed the amount of stuff that you can actually get for free if you're trying to do Discovery Day projects with stuff like that. Really? Yeah, like shipping crates and things. Like, There's a lot of wood type things out there that you can search around and get for free. So we want to label top, middle, ground. So we've got top floor, middle floor, and ground floor. Now, we're looking at a plan. So my buddy Randy, and I've talked about Randy before, but I've talked about him as an architect. He corrected me. He's not an architect. He got very defensive. He's a draftsman, or a draftsman, which is a, um, yes, a, an older title, because obviously that is not gender equal in its title, but he's a drafts person. He draws. So he's the person that draws the things for the architects. So let's say Randy goes out to the site, and he's got these three buildings. And the architect, who is his boss, says, all right, Randy, I need you to draft up the floor plan for the top, the middle, and the ground floor of this. So Randy sketches up these three plans, takes them back, hands them to his boss. But he didn't label them. So now his boss has to figure out which is the top, which is the middle, and which is the ground. So he emails Randy, and Randy was like, dude, if you know the buildings, you should be able to figure this out. Now, you would not actually talk to your boss like that. But if we can look at these buildings, we should be able to figure out which goes to which. Take your pencil or your highlighter or something and sketch where the plane intersects the building, what shapes we're going to end up getting on each of these different levels. Hey guys, I'm not drawing. What could you imagine that the right building has that the other two buildings don't seem to have? Hmm? So what 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 would you think that would be potentially? Like an elevator shaft, right? So this has a shaft going straight down through the middle of it that's got an open space vertically. But the middle building also has something kind of curious. 
Yeah, it's got like a big, and this actually, since it passes through the whole building, that would probably be something called like an atrium, or where they try to let natural light into the whole building. Um, I took a picture, I need to upload it, down when I went to OSU for all my heart stuff. They have these really cool reflective panels in the Ross Heart Hospital, if anyone's ever been there. They like reflect light all through the building, but they're all at different angles. So it's just really cool because it was all geometry. So, Mr. Smith, if you look at this left sketch, do you think that would coincide to the top floor, the middle floor, or the ground floor? The middle floor, why do you say that? Because it has like the same windows and things as the middle. Like ah, the yeah. This opening right here for the middle building, that's got to be your middle floor. Mr. Williams, what about the middle drawing there? Do you think that coincides with the top floor or the ground floor? That would be the bottom floor because, well, wait, no. Top what, floor, that's the top floor. What's the because, difference between those two drawings? On the top floor, there's, there's a smaller square. Ah. The Look at this fancy, fancy building. They have a pyramid at the top where this one just has a flat top, and this one just has a flat top. So on the top floor, we actually have a smaller space to work with. So it might be fancy, but it's actually kind of a dumb design because you have less building there. And this, of course, would then be your ground floor with the entire first floor, entire first floor, and the first floor with the elevator shaft. Any questions on how we would figure those out? So now, because Randy smarted off to his boss. His boss says, Randy, go back out there. And this is actually, he'll call me some days and be like, yo, I'm driving out to wherever to go do drawings. He says, I need a sketch of the vertical cross sections. So I need you start with if you just had your page. So let's imagine, here's your page. We're going to draw our vertical cross section. So give that a shot. Draw what you would get if you slice vertically down through all three of those buildings. So top to bottom, vertically, top to bottom. So just like the plate is showing, it kind of cuts through like this. So you're going to cut through left to right of the left to right, left to right. Yeah, you're going left to right, top to bottom. Because you couldn't slice through all buildings if you want front to back. You'd only get one of the buildings. So you have to go left to right to get all three. And this is going to, yeah, Randy's actually a draftsman. I was hanging out. No, but does he actually like cut buildings so you can get them? Mainly the horizontal cuts. You there's not much use for the vertical cuts depending on what you're doing. I mean there would be some applications, but there's less application for this. Most of the time you look at a floor plan, which is a horizontal cut, because you don't care about the three-dimensional, you just care about the two-dimensional, what is where. So when you like if we tried to draw a floor plan of Phoenix. We'd have little like boxes for the classrooms, we'd have long hallways, but we wouldn't see any height of how tall is the classroom, how tall are my cupboards. Like, none of that would matter. Now let's see how good we are at describing these things. So Elena, pick a building, left, middle, or right, and describe how I would draw it on my plan. I don't really know how to draw it. It's like... So let's start with our middle building then. Ignore the middle window. How, or like what shape would we get if I cut through that middle building ignoring that middle window? A rectangle. Right, like a tall rectangle. Then, if I think about the middle window, what do I have to do to change that rectangle? Yeah, I gotta draw a small rectangle inside of it. And this we could say like, you know, is glass or something like that. We could just color it a little bit different. Jaslyn, what about my left or my right buildings? Do you know how to draw either of those or describe how I want to draw it? Um, I don't know. Like, 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 like. The right one? Sure. So what are we going to end up seeing when I cut through the middle of that building vertically? Yeah, not just a rectangle. We're actually going to see two skinny rectangles because this would be the right side of the elevator shaft and the left side of the elevator shaft. And then our elevator fits right between here. 
Because notice these two spaces right here to the left and the right of the shaft, but that middle is open. Then my left building, Mr. Hone. Sure. Wait, shoot, that's, that's so, so back up. Let's talk about how we talk about geometry. Because okay. then you said, oh crap, which means you don't really have a good point. If I think about just the top part of the building, yeah. cutting it vertically, yeah. what kind of shape am I going to end up with? You're going to end up with like a, a rectangle with a, a isosceles triangle on top of it. Yeah. Why did you ask me if you could use your hands? That was a really good description. So I'm going to end up with a rectangle, but I'm not going to close it because he just told me on top I actually have an isosceles triangle. And if I want to be specific, I could say that that leg and that, like, I could draw a dotted line, but that line doesn't really exist. But yeah, I've got the edges of the building, the bottom of the building, and then the top edges of that pyramid, which would actually make a triangle. If your image was way off of this one, you might want to check why did I get that so screwed up. Try this again. We have a couple different buildings while I pass out your tests. Couple different types of buildings here. Uh, probably not. A lot of us mastered it. If you are not mastered, um, it is just corrections. So this one, if you are not mastered, it's just corrections. A couple of you guys, you just need to see me. So you're progressing, but you're not even progressing that, that big of a deal. So just come see me quickly. Even if you are progressing and you don't have a see me, you're more than welcome to see me, obviously. I think you guys can. I love you each. Mish, let's see how long I can stay in the same place. Sean, Ozzy, Noah, Monty. Smith. All right, let's try class answers on these. This top sketch would coincide with which level of the building? Everybody. Ooh, I heard bottom and top. Let's look here. If we think about this as a shopping complex, this to me looks like a car wash. Here we go to the Moo Moo or anywhere where you drive through the whole place from the front to the back. So, this is completely open front to back. This is completely open front to back. This would be my bottom. My middle one right here. Which is it? Top. The top, because that middle building is completely missing. That Moo Moo Car Wash is not that tall. And this has to then be the middle. Maybe this section right here in the Moo Moo is like where they spray stuff down or whatever. I don't know, because that's the drive through car wash that I know of. Up over by Kroger? Yeah, the barn. Moo Moo Car Wash. All right, hold up. Stay with me. Stay with me. We do not need to do any more of the lesson. I want you guys to tell me how to write my plans. Okay. So, hold up. Hey. Hi. So, go ahead and start putting your stuff away. I need your opinions. So, this, this test is two and three D shapes, right? And we are going to do a review game. Yes, Would you guys want to do your test on Thursday and potentially have Friday to finish? Although I think most of us would probably get done on Thursday, and then Friday we might move on to a lesson and might have homework. Or would you rather put the test on Friday and just try to get it done in that one day? On Friday, so we don't have homework. So Thursday. shut your eyes, quote unquote. And we're going to play a review game the day before the test, regardless. Friday, so we don't have homework. So shut your eyes. If you want to take the test on Thursday, you like sooner rather than later, and then we might probably have a lesson on Friday. Okay, put those hands down. 
you want the test on Friday, which would mean review game Thursday, no homework going into the weekend. Okay, hands down. Eyes open. Friday wins. So it goes in my book. Sorry at seven. Mastery on Friday. Alright, thank you guys. We are like a minute early, so please don't be